Thank you very much for your interest in this in our paper. This is, uh, is flattening the curve: pandemic-induced revaluation of urban real estate. Joint work with Arpit Gupta, Vrinda Mittal, and Jonas Peters. So the starting point of our analysis is something that we've all been hearing about over the last year, namely that the COVID pandemic has pr prompted an urban flight, where people have, you know, in droves left the large urban centers uh, of the major cities in America and gone to the suburbs. And a lot of this happened between March and June in 2020. So we document this migration pattern using very high frequency cell phone uh, GPS data from a data provider called Venpath. And so what I'm showing you in this graph here is population changes over this period again, on the Y axis against distance from the city center. Uh, and I do this for New York City, but the pictures are very similar for the other large metropolitan areas in the United States. And each cross here in the graph is a zip code. And so what you can see is the zip codes that are close to the urban core, think of this as the zip codes in Manhattan, they saw large population outflows to the tune of about 20%, whereas the suburban zip codes on the right of this graph saw large population inflows you know, to the tune of 10 to, 10 to 20% as well. Now, maybe not surprisingly, these population flows caused major upheaval in housing markets. And we first look at uh, the rental market. And what I'm showing you in the left picture here is kind of really the key object of interest in this paper, which is something called the bid rent function. And the bid rent function in urban economics simply plots the level of rents against the distance from the city center. So here on the left axis, I plotted rents in logs. Uh, I plotted again the log distance to the city center. And what you can see pre-pandemic, which is the green line here, is that that relationship is steeply downward sloping. And the reason it's downward sloping is simply because it's great to live in the urban core. We've had centuries really of urbanization. People like to flock to cities and they love the city centers because, you know, for a variety of reasons, there's urban amenities there, there's the opera, there's restaurants, uh, but there's also agglomeration effects. You know, being close to other productive workers makes one more productive, potentially resulting in a higher salary. And, uh, you know, and, and finally, there's typically much less commuting if you already live close to your job in the city center. Right. And so for all these reasons, traditionally, uh, you know, the cost of living has been much higher in the city center than in the suburbs. Now, this changed to a large extent during the pandemic. And so that red line here is that same bid rent function one year later in December 2020. And what you can see is that rents have fallen a lot, you know, close to the city center, whereas they've increased substantially farther away from the city center in the suburbs. And so that's where the title of the paper comes from. This bid rent function has flattened. We call this a flattening of the curve. It's a different curve than the one we've usually talked about uh, when talking about pandemics, but it's, you know, it's an important curve and it's a, stark, it's a stark change. Another way of visualizing that same change is to look at changes in rents instead of rent levels, which is what the right panel does. And again, you see you know, large declines in rents near the, city, near the city center and large increases in rents to the tune of five to 10% in the suburbs. And again, that picture looks very similar for the other metropolitan areas. The paper uh, you know, presents the evidence for, for all of the metropolitan areas. Now, one way we wanna visualize this, uh, this kind of flattening of the bid rent function is to estimate that relationship between rents and distance from the city center. You know, the slope uh, of that relationship is this parameter delta here. And what we're going to do is we're going to control for some zip code specific covariates as well. And then we're going to repeat this estimation every month. So every dot here is basically that cross-sectional relationship between you know, the rent in all of the zip codes of all the 30 largest metropolitan areas and the distance of those zip codes from their respective uh, urban cores. And what you can see is that that relationship is negative, right? It's a downward sloping bit rent function. Uh, but that relationship, and that relationship is fairly stable pre-pandemic. But now see what happens you know, during the pandemic, the, the solid line being uh, March 2020, when the pandemic first uh, really hits America, you could see that that relationship becomes a lot less negative. It becomes essentially statistically indistinguishable from zero, which means that for the average metropolitan area in the United States, that urban rent premium is basically gone. It's completely reversed, it's disappeared, right? And so this is, if, if you like, the main, uh, the main uh, empirical finding in the paper. Now we repeat this analysis that I've just shown you for rents. We also repeat that for prices, for house prices, for owner-occupied housing. And essentially we're finding similar patterns, except that the patterns are a lot less strong than they were for rents, right? So here's New York City again. I'm plotting price changes now 
again, as a function of the distance to the city center. And again, we're seeing much weaker price, price changes in the urban core than in the suburbs. Um, but the difference is not quite as stark as it was for rents. And then similarly, in the right panel, I'm repeating my uh, price gradient analysis, this time using the log of prices as the left-hand side variable instead of the log of rents. And again, you see this gradual flattening of that curve, but that, you know, that slope doesn't fall as much as it did for rents. Now we think this is an interesting observation, this, this kind of this distinction between what's happening to uh, the price gradient and the rent gradient. And we think we can learn something from that difference about what the markets, the housing markets are expecting about future rents. And so the core of uh, you know, the, the analytical results in the paper basically ask the question, you know, what's gonna happen in the future to urban rents? And we're gonna use a standard asset pricing framework that's due to Campbell and Schiller, a simple present value framework that basically says the price of a house is the present discounted value of all future rents. And so the idea is that if we have data both on you know, pre-pandemic rental growth rates and pre-pandemic price to rent ratios, as well as how these objects changed during the pandemic, we can extract what the market believes future rents uh, to, to look like. And by focusing on urban relative to suburban zip codes, we can difference out common drivers of price to rent ratios like interest rates. We know that mortgage interest rates fell dramatically in 2020, you know, that obviously supported house prices. We wanna, we wanna get rid of that effect. We wanna difference it out by looking at urban versus suburban zip codes. Now this Campbell Schuller model, you know, requires you to take a stance on on, on what's gonna happen in the future, in particular, whether the pandemic and all the changes it has brought on the housing market, whether those changes are transitory and the world will revert back to the world we had before the pandemic, call it 19, 2019, or kind of the opposite extreme assumption could be, you know, all of these changes are permanent. You know, the world as it was in December, 2020 is gonna be that same world forever after. Now, obviously the truth is somewhere in between and which of these two worlds we live in is gonna have important implications for that expected future rent growth. And so here's where we're gonna rely on, you know, some external data from surveys. Essentially a panel of professional forecasters was asked the question, was asked this exact question. Do you believe that these changes in the housing market, including uh, everything that's been going on with working from home, whether those changes will be permanent or transitory? And, you know, this panel was about 102 experts from academia, from the business sector, professional forecasters, essentially. About 36% of them said these changes will be permanent. The remaining 64% said they will be transitory. And so we're gonna use these weights, 36% and 64%, to essentially come, come up with a, a combined, a weighted average of these two cases to come up with a, a benchmark baseline number for this expected future rent growth. So when you go through this calculation, and again, I refer you to the paper for the details, what uh, comes out of this is essentially uh, a story of urban revival. Essentially, the housing market is telling us because prices didn't fall as much in the urban core and didn't rise as much in the suburbs as rents changed, you know, the housing markets are predicting that you know, the urban zip codes will have, a re will, will have a rebound relative to the suburbs. And so for example, for New York, um, we predict that urban, urban rent growth will be 4.5 percentage points faster, larger than suburban rent growth over the next several years. Uh, that's, that's if we're in this transitory case. In the permanent case, it's about a half a percent permanently every year. If we combine these two cases, we arrive at a, a number for 2021 of 0.75 percentage points. So again, that means that the housing markets are telling us that this year in 2021, urban rent growth will exceed suburban rent growth by about three quarters of a percentage point. You can repeat this analysis for each metropolitan area, which is what this uh, graph is doing. And so you're seeing interesting cross-sectional variation. So the last thing we do in our paper is we try to get a little bit more at the mechanism behind these changes in housing markets. And you know, there's a several kind of potential candidate explanations here. One explanation is that it's all about working from home. The fact that you know, we are no longer bound to our work location, we could just perform our work from home. And so that alleviates us from commuting and commuting is pretty painful as we all know. Another, an alternative explanation is that, you know, what has happened with COVID is that, you know, all the things that we used to love about cities, all these urban amenities, we don't like them as much anymore. We've had a change of preferences for, for them. 
And so something like this could potentially be captured by COVID stringency measures, which essentially measure how different locations differentially shut down their, their urban amenities. And then finally, we think about uh, you know, the housing inelasticity, you know, how easy is it to add or, or subtract supply, you know, add supply to, to, the, to, to, to a metropolitan area as another potential driver of these changes. And so what we do is we look at in the cross section of 30 metropolitan areas, we look at how large were these rent gradient changes, and we ask, you know, cross sectionally what correlates with these rent gradient changes. And essentially what we find is that the, the key force is this working from home force. It's, you know, regardless of, you know, which other measures you include in this analysis, um, you know, including when you combine all three of these potential uh, covariates, we find that working from home is, comes, comes out as by far the strongest. So cities like San Francisco or like New York, where a lot of jobs can be done from home, are the places where we saw the largest changes in the rent gradient. We, by the way, also find that when we go drill down to the zip code level, there's even variation in working from home at the zip code level. And so that's nice because that allows us to kind of potentially disentangle this urban amenity story versus the commuting slash working from home story, because presumably the amenities are fairly similar within the MSA or, or we can control for the amenities at the zip code level. So long story short, remote work explains a significant amount of variation in the rent gradient changes after controlling for amenity and supply in elasticity measures. Now, this kind of goes back to this idea of an urban revival. Presumably, we're expecting these working from home changes to, to affect you know, how people live and work, uh, you know, certainly in 2020, uh, and potentially you know, still in 2021, maybe 2022, but presumably we're expecting a partial reversal of this working from home. And so that's consistent with this you know, story of urban revival as people come back to the office, as they start commuting again, some of that, some of these future, uh, some of the rents in the urban core will, will pick back up. You know, that said, a part of the working from home will be permanent. And so the fact that we see this strong association between working from home and price gradient changes suggests that a component of that working from home will be permanent, will, will, will permanently alter the way we work and live and therefore permanently alter, uh, you know, how prices uh, behave in the urban core versus the suburbs. So let me conclude. Um, our paper documents a pandemic triggered urban flight that benefits the suburban real estate sector hurting the urban core. Obviously, this is not just true in residential real estate, which our paper focuses on. It's also affecting downtown office demand, for example, which is, is, is suffering dramatically. And you know, a lot of that story is still playing out as CEOs decide you know, when and how many people to, to bring back to the, to the office, uh, when to do that, and, and kind of in general, what the future of work, uh, will, work arrangements will look like. We find that working from home opportunities explain much of the disappearance of this urban rent premium. Uh, house prices and rents suggest that much, but not all of the working from home phenomenon is expected to be transitory. So an urban rent revival is, is expected. Uh, but like I said, some of it will be permanent and, and how much uh, will, will be an important uh, factor in helping us understand how the COVID pandemic will affect housing affordability, as well as the fiscal health of superstar cities. Thank you very much.